Welcome to a very special episode here on the Basketball Zone YouTube channel. Today, we are grading the top 10 2021 NBA prospects, now first-year players, with my boy, Robert Misovich. My man, let's get down to the gritty of things. But before we get into the top 10, I want to name two of my favorite guys out of the top 10, right? Which are... James Book Knight and Chris Duarte. First, first and foremost, I'm gonna give Chris Duarte a solid B because when he was healthy, the guy was just a straight score, can do it on all three levels. So I really like that, and I see a positive future with him and Tyrese Oliver moving forward. And then with James Book Knight, he didn't get the chance this year to really showcase his ability to score the ball. But I'm gonna give him a solid C because when he did get a chance to actually play, he was a monster. But go ahead. I mean, if we're doing two honorable mentions i'll give mm -hmm. shangun definitely my my okay. ups for that just in terms of players how play play style and just how he's him. been used in that houston houston system i think he could just be so much better somewhere else so i think he's really good and i would assume like for uh i think it's kind of crazy when we started out the season that you know we were looking at chicago with alex caruso and lonzo ball and two injuries and he stepped in and it's hard to argue that he wouldn't go top 10 if, if you did this redraft, it would be very hard to keep him out of the lottery. He's really good. So good steal okay. for Chicago. Yeah. At number 10, we have Zaire Williams. What would you give him as a grade? I'll give him a solid C. I think the three-point shooting is a little discouraging, right? Especially with the pace and space. Uh, he hasn't been overly efficient. Um, obviously, defense is a really big part of his upside, and he still has a lot long way to go physically to develop that. But he's playing 20 minutes a night. In 60 games, filled in pretty admirably for Dylan Brooks. Memphis Grizzlies are a really good team, and he's yeah, been a part of that. You cannot play 20 minutes as a rookie, especially an underdeveloped physical rookie. Um, I just think the shooting, shooting splits are a little bit discouraging, and I think there are a lot of players ahead of him in this draft who were picked behind him that maybe could have contributed a little bit more. But I think it's more of an upside pick. I think maybe the player mold five years down the line, you could be looking at another Mikhail Bridges, maybe. Um, so yeah, I'll give it a C. Um, I think he, a C with, I hope he gets a lot. I think he'll get a lot better. Yeah. So I'm going to give him a C plus, even though he did shoot like crap from beyond the arc, which is about 30.4. He did shoot 64.7% from two point shot. So he's a long two point shooter. And that's what I saw when I scouted him from Stanford. You can't see the size, the athleticism, those gifts are there. The intelligence is there. I think he'll be a shade under like a Mikhail if I have to project them down the road, but you know, C plus on a very good basketball team. And I, I really like him. I think he's going to be just fine. Is he a top 10 player in this draft? Who knows? But this year, again, like you said, admirable way to replace or fill in for a guy like Dylan Brooks. So C plus for me at number nine, we have Sacramento's Davion Mitchell. What are you grading him? Oh boy, you're not gonna like me. Um, I give him a C minus okay. uh, for this one. I think the shooting is. This, I, I think the shooting is discouraging. I think the fact that he's 23 years old, uh, you expected a little bit more coming into this. Um, you know, the the higher minutes after the trade, obviously, of Tyrese Halliburton and a playmaking big like. Uh, like Sabonis is going to help him hopefully going into next year, but the shooting percentage has to come up um, at 23 years old. Again, you have players who are picked behind him in this draft who are much younger, who are more productive this year on better teams. And I think that that bodes very poorly for him. Uh, that being said, good defender, really good on ball defender, which is pretty rare um, for a rookie. Uh, I think he has a lot of pride. As a, as a player, I think a lot of what he brings to the team is kind of off the court, leadership, intangibles. So, again, like I give it a C- minus just because I think okay. there were better players available. Um, and I don't necessarily know how he fits in with Fox going forward. Okay, so the intangibles for me have always been there. Kid's a winner. Everywhere he's gone, he's won. Uh, he's a guy that can really set the tone defensively. When you say he's good off uh, on the ball, he's great on the ball. He's already a top five on ball defender, uh, without question. I in think the league? as yeah, without question. As as a whole, 
I, I would say C plus full body of work. I, I'm, I'm gonna stay consistent with that, and the same goes with K, Scotty, and, and and all those. So yes, as a whole, C plus because he struggled shooting the ball. Like the mechanics are flawless. It's just a matter of confidence, and that confidence once De'Aaron went down, and obviously post trade, he's been absurd, averaging 19 and nine. Um, and then and in the last eight games, he's led the league with 327 minutes played. 24 total miles ran, which is first in the NBA. 13.1 miles ran on offense, which is first in the NBA. 10.9 miles ran on defense, which is first in the NBA. 724 touches, which is fourth in the NBA. So what that means is he's had a high usage rate. Uh, He's played insanely well on both ends of the floor, being very impactful. And off the ball with De'Aaron Fox to answer your question, I think he's going to be just fine. It just took him towards the latter end of the season for his shots to start falling in. To me, it was a matter of when it would happen. It, it was never of, is his shots going to fall? Because his jumper really is flawless. And we all know his drive for the game. Like, that's one thing that I, I can tell you. He's obsessed with basketball. Like, the Kings have to cancel practices just to get him out of the gym. Like, it's that serious. Mm-hmm. Like, he's that committed to the game of basketball. And his shot, like, off the ball, he's going to be just fine next to De'Aaron Fox next year. At number eight. We have Franz Wagner from the Magic. What are you grading him? I'll give him an A minus. Um, yeah, I think he's been really good. I think the Magic are very lucky to have him. Um, I think he's been efficient. Um, he's third in the NBA uh, behind in rookies for win shares behind Evan Mobley and Scotty Barnes. He's been impactful on a team that's quite frankly a mess. He's played the right way. Um, he's tried to play two way. And he's pretty athletic, low key. There's always a bias against white guys. Um, mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> that they're not athletic and that they're stiffs. He's not like his brother. He's really good. Um, I think the Magic have finally found a piece in the draft after Mo Bamba and Jalen Suggs and all of their misses. <laughs> uh, I think, I think, I think, uh, I really, I really like the fit with him and Isaac as a three four combo, just long, rangy guys, um, you know, who are tall. Um, I think he's good, man. I, I really think he's going to be an all-star. I, I think like he two, three, maybe four all-star selections in the future oh, for wow. him. He's incredible. No, you have to watch him. I know, okay. I know magic games are really hard to watch, but he's been really good this year. So I'm going to give Franz an A minus as well, uh, but I'm not going to project him to be an all-star like you are. So I'm not as high on that end, but in terms of just an overall prospect, full body of work, he was very consistent this year, right? He had a couple flaws coming into the NBA that he really, you know, got better at, which was his just his 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 shooting. Like I had question marks about that, I had question marks about some of those things, like him going left. And he answered a lot of those things. Like he has a nice floater. He can lead your break in transition. So I really liked him this year. I think the Magic have a really foundational at the worst super role player like a Mikael Bridges type player like that type of impact like everyone can't be a star so I I think that's where we differ in terms of interpretations of what things mean to me he's a super role player that will be extremely impactful um, and that will help this team win games down the road so a minus for this season as a rookie at number seven we have Jonathan Kaminga what are you grading him I'll give him an a minus I think uh, in terms of player and fit in the in the organization, I think, again, another team that after a very disastrous draft last year with Wiseman, I think they hit a home run with Kaminga. I think he was absolutely the best player on the board. As good as Franz has been, as well as you can say that he might fit in, I think as a positionless switch everything, 3-4, potentially small ball 5, uber athletic, has been really good defensively, playing in this right culture, learning the game under Kerr from Draymond, Steph. I mean, he's been really good, and he's impacting winning right now for a team that's really good. He's earned his minutes. Um, Yeah, I don't know how you can complain about this pick. And, you know, there's a lot of maturity questions that were there before um, shot selection. Well, you know what? If you have those issues in Golden State, you don't play. As James Wiseman is finding out right now, if you're not ready, they won't play you. So he's earned his 16 minutes a night. I think that's highly impressive. And he's one of the only 
only rookies on the board at that time where they were drafting that could have done that. So good on him and good for them. As you said, thriving in the right culture, mm -hmm. a super blessing for him not to go in the top five. Because I'm going to say this right now. All those question marks we had about him, if he goes to Orlando, it's a separate conversation that we're having right now. So Absolutely. good for him. He got drafted to the right situation. anywhere. In, I'm not going to say everywhere else because I think he could have done well in Toronto as well. But yes. God, I, I don't know how he would have done in Cleveland. I don't know how he did in Orlando. I don't even know how he, how he would have done in Sacramento. And I'm being honest. So for a kid like him to do what he's doing now, all you can do is praise him, give him props, and projecting him, yes, if he stays in this culture and this system, he's going to thrive because he's already showing what he's capable of. Like the raw talents, that was never a question mark, right? It was the maturity level, and it was those other intangibles that right now he's showing that he can do a little bit of a lot of good stuff. So for me, I'm going to give him a B plus. At number six, we have Josh Giddy from the Oklahoma City Thunder. What are you grading him, Rob? I'm inclined to say it's it's hard. It's hard. I'll, I'll give him a B plus. I'm a little, you know, uh, hasn't impacted winning super much. The shooting has been a bit streaky or bad. Mm -hmm. If if I'll say the defense has been not great, um, but a lot. I think people who are comparing him to Luca should adjust their expectations. He's not Luca. Yeah. Um, but that being said, um, I do see a a guy who's tough. I see a guy who sees the floor extremely well as a very very tall. Like he's definitely six eight. <laughs> he's definitely six eight six nine. Um, tall playmaker. So so yeah. So I'll give it a B plus. Um, again, I haven't watched a ton of him this year. I've watched. Yeah. I've, studied, I've looked at his numbers and I've watched like maybe six games all year of him. So I don't have as informed opinion about him, but I'm curious to see what you would say about him. So he's definitely not Luka Doncic. Uh, nowhere near the score on all three levels. Yes, Luka took a lot of tough shots around Madrid. He continues to take a lot of tough shots with the Dallas Mavericks, but that's just who he is. He's a big-time shot maker, tough shot maker, and that's where I would say the big differentiator factor is, and, and that's a differentiator factor for a lot of players, right? Like a Tyrese Halliburton, for example, uh, you know, who, who have similar characteristics like Tyrese, Giddy, Luca, all, all very good passers, great passers. But what separates all these players? And obviously, being able to score the ball on all three levels. And that's what Luca does. So he's not a Luka Doncic. Like you said, he's not very good defensively. I don't think he projects well to be to to be solid defensively. The best we can project him to be is a good team defender. Um, and I th and again, when you're six eight six nine, you can hide those guys. Jason Kidd has done a marvelous job this year and really showcasing that that it's possible when Luca is six eight, like you can put him on the corner, put him against a stretch four, and it'll work out if you surround them with other wings that are very good defenders. So that is a positive, I guess, moving forward. So for me. I'm going to give him a B plus as well, just because the Thunder are really bad. And on the team where he's going to have a high usage rate and showcase what he can do, um, I think that's fair in terms of where I project him to be. Definitely not an all star, but like borderline, always, you know, making guys better. Uh, uh, like a Ricky Rubio on steroids was, would, would be my best um, comparison. Things are about to get juicy. At number five, we have Jalen Suggs. What are you grading him, Rob? <laughs> F. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> this guy said it. Okay. Stop it. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not going to stop it. Okay. Look. Okay. You know, I'm a, you, you know, I'm a stats nerd. Okay. I, yeah. Get this for win shares. Okay. Win shares. <laughs> And value of replacement for all of you stat nerds out there, go and Google it. There have there have been 601 players in the NBA who have logged minutes in the NBA this year. This includes G League call ups. This includes guys on 10 days. Jalen Suggs is the worst in both of those. Okay, he is he is he's negative 1.6 win shares for the for the Magic this year. Compare that, and for, for anyone out there who doesn't understand win shares, it has nothing to do with team success, I promise you, because Franz Wagner has 4.1 on the Magic this year. Okay, there are a lot of players who play for bad teams, but they play the right way. His turnovers so explain it to are, us. Okay, his turnovers are a big problem. 
his lack of on ball creation. He's not a very good passer, in my opinion. Okay. Like we're talking half court, not full court. His football passes are great. He, he makes a dazzling play every single game. Every time I've watched him, he's had a block that makes me go, ooh, wow, or a drive that makes me go, wow. But he also misses the rim clear. He airballs threes that are wide open. Like we're not even talking close. He is basically, ironically, what people thought Scotty Barnes would be offensively. I'm not even kidding. Um, in terms of limited <laughs> scoring, scoring ability, um, I'm not even kidding, dude. Like no, 20%, go ahead, go ahead. 20, 20, 20% from, from three. As, how do you justify that as a guard who was supposed to come in as a shooter? 20%? I understand injuries have been a problem. I understand mm-hmm. the magic are not great. He's, he's completely miscast as a high usage player. At 25% usage, he's just below Cade in this draft class. But I'm telling you right now, that this is a pick that if you did it again, 10,000% of GMs put this guy outside the top 10. I'll bet my life on it. There's nothing that can justify. Ayo Desumu has been 100 times better than him this year. It's not even close. This is a complete F for me. Okay. So he will get better. I, <laughs> so the one thing I'll disagree, he's definitely top 10. Definitely not top 5 in terms of how he's played this year. I can't justify everything you just said in terms of stats. Like all the advanced analytics are going against him. And they're projecting him to be apparently like this bust. But if I just, you know, sit, sit back and think about what my scouting evaluation was of him... I'm going to go with that and I'm going to bet on talent every single time. So to me, he can still be at worst like a super backup at the point guard position. Um, say like a Jameer Nelson type player. Um, and, and that's just in reference to like worst Jameer case started. scenario. Jameer well, started most of his career. He was well, like started. worst case scenario, like a, like a Jameer <laughs> Nelson type player. Jalen Suggs, is a basketball player. Like he's an NBA basketball player. He's not going to go to Europe and go play. Like this dude is a hooper. Uh, from what I know that he, he loves basketball. I don't know what your intel is telling you. I think he's had a rough year. This is a year that he can just pick apart all his game, you know, get himself the right trainer and just learn from these things and go back to what made him successful at Gonzaga, which are all the intangibles, the leadership, the shooting. Again, all these things that he did well, they didn't go his way this year. That doesn't mean he's going to be a bust. That doesn't mean that he can't come back next year, you What's know, better in shape and just kill it. Like, dude, shape I believe is not the in problem. his game. He's in incredible shape. He's in incredible shape. The I believe in his is, game. Gonzaga hit Gonzaga hit him, dude. Like, they, that's a system team. They they hide a lot of their guards. Um, I think he functioned in that system. But when you really break down his game tape, like really break it down, he couldn't get past this guy off the dribble. He lacks creation. And honestly, these are the type of players, like there's a type of player that is always undervalued in the draft and overvalued. The type of player who's always undervalued is the big wing. Okay, Giannis, Scotty, Luca, Always undervalued because... They play on smaller courts in college Mm -hmm. or in Europe. And then when the minute you get into the NBA, those gaps are so much bigger, they can attack them. The guys who are always overrated in college, Jay Williams. Jay Williams. Um, Guys like Jalen Suggs. I'm not comparing the two. And honestly, the the reason I was holding my face and I couldn't even hold my uh, contentment back, Jameer Nelson was a vertically challenged 5'10 guy. Okay. Jalen Suggs is an uber athletic six foot three guy. So he can't be would, better than 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 Jameer. I will tell you this right now. <laughs> That's if, my point. If 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 if, if Jalen Suggs ever has one season as good as Jameer Nelson's career average, it would be the miracle of statistic, statistical basketball should should be over. <laughs> Let me put it this way. No rookie in NBA history, let me put it this way, no rookie, no top 10 pick in NBA history has been this bad. You want to talk about win shares? Negative 1.6? Dude, Andrea Bargnani was a bust. He had 1.9. Michael Olubakandi had negative 0.3. He was a bust bust, okay? Kwame Brown had 0.7. It's hard to be this bad. It's almost impossible. So you can say, yes, the role is amplifying that massively. But you know what? I think, can I go back and give Franz an A plus 
Yes, let's do that. <laughs> I give Franz an A+. Plus. I will give Franz an A+, plus because he's had to play with this guy. Because play, <laughs> playing with a 20% high-volume three-point shooter kills you. It kills your spacing, dude. Like, yeah. like you, You're going to have to edit a, a lot of this out. This is just like, this could be its own fucking Rob hates... <laughs> hates chill and sucks but I love it. this is no. crazy to me no i, yeah. I again I, i'm i'm not i'm not seeing it from you know from like the raptors fan oh i don't know, care about the raptors fan dude i'm talking as like a basketball fan i'm telling you like what that's i'm fair. Seeing. like 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 yeah. i can't justify the analytics right like the analytics are against him i'm gonna go off of like what i've seen from his intangibles in college you have every right i'm not to like shit not, on him I'm not. right like no, you have no, no, every no, right I'm to not. shit on him like that's fine <laughs> Dude, I'm just I have saying, like, Jalen no, no, no. is a hooper. And, like, Dude. I can guarantee that at worst, that I, F this, he's going to be better than Jameer Nelson. Like, no, he's not. That's no, a fact. Not. Like, that, like that that's not, not even, happen. That's not even a question it. mark. Like, he's going to be better than Jameer Nelson. Stop it. And <laughs> then we so, will come back dude, and be like, Jameer okay. Na- Jameer, dear, dear, Jameer, dear Jameer Nelson, if you ever watch this, I'm so sorry. Because this is, like, straight up. This is disrespectful to – like, dude, he was a sec- – Jameer was the second best player on a contender, bro. That's Jalen my point. Suggs will not- Jalen Suggs will not be the second best bench player on a contender. I'll bet my life on it. Like you cannot, dude. Okay, he, he first can of be all, your first best bench player for sure. Okay, so for you're talking the guy, you're saying okay, let's say that's his upside, first best bench player. Mm-hmm. That's better than the second best player in a contender, bro. Come on, I, I need you to. Go I said back at and worst. I, I said at, at worst he's gonna be that. At, at you worst. said you said at worst he's gonna be better than Jameer Nelson. Yeah, for sure. And then at like to me, he's a better. He, he's he's gonna be better. All right, all right. I will tell you right now. He's on several little, little. He's little gonna be thing, out of the league. In, he's gonna be out of the league in six years. Oh my god! See, that's where, that's where I. That's that's crazy. Or that's, or that's crazy. He, or he will be like at the at the absolute end of the rotation. You know what? Pr- bring this video up in ten years. <laughs> I, I will. Dude, you know how bad you have to be to be 601 next after season. 601? What do you mean? I, I'm gonna bring it up next season when oh, like he's gonna he's gonna get better because you can't get worse than this. Like he's at the bottom. <laughs> oh, there it is. He's the worst <laughs> player in the NBA by a country mile. At number four, we have our very own Scotty Barnes. I think the rookie of the year. I had him number two on my big board. To me, I'm gonna give him an A plus this year. Maybe I might be a little bit biased, but I don't think I am. I think he's been exceptionally good in every sense of the word. Unselfish, just a complete team builder, right? Like that's what you want to build around, projecting him mm. to be what I think he's going to be. But Scotty Barnes has been exceptional, man. So I'm gonna give him an A plus this year. And the Raptors, or oh, last night. They did what I told you they would do. What did I tell you? The best matchup for the Raptors is who? The Philadelphia 76ers. I said that I said that on the last podcast. I'm going to say it again. I hope they get them because that will give them at least a second round exit. Hmm. Okay. Um, for Scotty, I will give him an A. I'm not going to give him an A+. Plus. I'll give him an A. Um, he gets major points for improving his jump shot. He's been incredibly uh, gifted. And I, like, sorry, let's start that over. You're going to have to edit that out. Mm-hmm. Okay, for Scotty Barnes, I will give him an A. He is my favorite rookie. That does not mean that I necessarily will give him an A+. Plus. The reason for that being, yes, he deserves a lot of credit for working on He gave on Franz it. A+. Plus. <laughs> would you not go give Scotty A+. Plus? In terms of the systems that they are thriving in, and, and what they're having to do for their respective teams, the role they're playing, usage, the players around them. I'm sorry, Scotty Barnes would not do well with Jalen Suggs and Markel Fultz and Mo Bamba. Come on, you know, like the, Franz is doing a lot with a lot less. Um, look, let's put it this way. He's been unassertive at times. His perimeter defense has been a step slow. A lot of this has to do with, we're just grading not who they are, but how they've played. Okay. Who Scotty is, A plus, 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 plus. Okay. Thousand pluses. How he's played, A. Um, rebounding has been good. The task that he has been given from Nick Nurse, he is, according to um, according to the stats, he is the most versatile defender in the NBA, which means he has spent 
the apps, he spent equal times on all five positions, which is crazy to think about. Uh, the Raptors have thrown into the Wolves 36 minutes a night. Um, but all of this extra work that he's put into the offseason, he didn't have a lot of rest coming into the season. He was literally in the gym the day after the draft. The day, like, draft happened, partied out in New York, partied out next morning in the gym. He has overworked himself into, like, like his legs are dead. His feet are dead. It's really impacted his perimeter defense. It's it's absolutely led to a lot of lulls, the additional minute load. So I'll say that he hasn't been perfect, but he's been incredible for the Raptors. He's contributed to winning in a way no rookie has this year. Um, he's been he's been given a very expanded uh, role in this team, but he's had a lot of help around him. He's had the best coach out of any of these top ten players, uh, top ten picks. He's had the best coach, the best development. He's been given all the. He's been given the star. He's been given the spotlight. He's been given the best system around him to function, and he has accepted it. Um, but I'm not going to penalize other players for not having that system around them. So yeah. At number three, we have Evan Mobley, who again I had him number six on my draft board. I regret it a lot. Uh, I apologize to Evan Mobley. I was like, damn, I'm right about this guy. I watched him in summer league, and I was like, damn, he's skinny. Uh, you know, I wasn't going Marvin Bagley vibes, but I'm like, damn, he's hella soft. Shangun is just destroying this kid. I was disappointed, and I was like, yeah, I, I was kind of right. But then, like, as soon as that season started, his just his brain just bam, like he was there, and obviously it helped having, you know, Jared Allen and like the rest of the guys and lower market in, and you know how they just killed the space for other guys. They were like, we gonna give you a bunch of three point shots, but we gonna just like. We gonna close this lane for y'all, so y'all can't drive in, in inside of us. So, you know, in terms of impact and just overall full body of work, I gotta get him an A. This kid is legit. He can hit you in every single spot offensively. I love him. The Cavs got themselves a hell of a unicorn type big. Congrats to them. And again, I'm gonna give him an A. Um, I'll give him an A minus. Uh. I think his impact on defense has been a little bit overblown. Um, I think he's been really good at the rim. I think he's been really good at the rim. I think he's incredibly long. I can't believe you compared him to Marvin Bagley because he has literally the one thing that Marvin no, Bagley would benefit so much. No, he was giving me Marvin so Bagley's vibe. I said he was giving Marvin, like, watching him live, I was like, because I remember Bagley, and I was like, he's giving me those vibes. Like, he's skinny, he's underdeveloped. But he, he was still going to be a superior – I mean, Marvin's the worst defender ever, like, in history. But I'm I'm just saying, like, like Evan Mobley it was going to be a fine defender no matter what. But I was like, damn, like, he's soft as hell. And, like, Chen Goon obliterated him in that in that, in, in that first game. Like, it was embarrassing. I was there at watching it. It's not a good matchup. But obviously, like, if you're giving the, the, the Cavs a pick, like a, a draft grade for the pick, obviously you give him an A+, because they hit a home run with this pick, right? For sure. But in him. terms of his actual season, I give him an A-, minus because um, he hasn't been overly assertive. Uh, he has also had a ton of help around him. Okay, Darius Garland creating so much opportunity, so many opportunities for him and Jared Allen at the rim has really eased out his offensive, I want to call it lack of assertiveness. Uh, Jared Allen and Kevin Love being behind him has really helped to technically help him a lot defensively. I know it's kind of crazy to say Kevin Love is helping Evan Mobley defensively, but he's a big guy and he does sometimes take take some of those bigger matchups that would otherwise hurt Mobley. And I think, you know, again, it's hard to give Scotty an A and give Evan an A as well, just because Scotty's had to do like a lot more for the Raptors defensively and offensively. Um, so yeah, I, I give it an A minus on a curve. I'm having to give it okay. on a curve because I didn't give Scotty the, uh, the A plus. So I'm going to give him an A minus for that. At number two, we have Jalen Green from the Houston Rockets. What are you grading him? I give him a B plus. Um, probably surprising for a lot of people given how Jalen started the season, but mm -hmm. I don't think, I think as far as I'll put he it, he killed way, it in the second half. Like he, he's killing it right now. I think he was killing it even part of the first half. I think there isn't a single player that I think is in a worse situation than him. Uh, Christian Wood is just so selfish as a player. Um, I think uh, KPJ is not necessarily the greatest uh, backcourt mate for him. Um, he's an extremely young team that is losing a lot. And he's a very competitive guy and a really good person, you know. And 
Um, I have really high hopes for him. I know that the defense is has always been a question, but I think offensively, I'm seeing maybe a better shooting Anthony Edwards uh, in terms of just offensive assertiveness. And, you know, again, he's not the physical, like, behemoth in terms of, like, strength and stuff, but he's a different type of athlete, and he's a generational athlete. He's definitely the best, second best or second best athlete in this draft. Do you think he'll be better um, than Zach Levine? I do. Um, well, maybe. Uh, probably. I, I'm a little bit torn on whether he'll be better than Levine, but in either case, you're talking about in Levine, you're going to be talking about an all star. Like at the end of yeah. Levine's career, you're going to be talking about a seven or eight time all star. And if that's what you got at number two in the draft, that's not a bad place to be. Um, that being said, you know, physical development is a really big thing for a lot of rookies. Obviously, everyone didn't come into this league as Scotty Barnes, Cade Cunningham. You know, these guys are a little bit further along physically. But for a guy like Jalen, um, having to match up against grown men every single night, given his frame, and to still be, I mean, he scored 30 points in the last three, four games. Um, it's incredible what he's doing. It's giving me shades of a guy from North Carolina, 80, 84. Um, it's Jordan-esque. You know, oh, granted, he's not going to be Michael Jordan, but it's 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 like that. That's like funny the way you say that because like yeah, that's crazy you say that because we had Patrick Beverly say it about Anthony Edwards, like you can be the next Michael Jordan, and now you're kind of saying, okay, J- Jalen's giving you those vibes, and it's just funny how like those are like two guys that again, like you just compared them without thinking about it or just like how you set it all up, and I, I just think it's fascinating because both those guys are so talented, and they're just freak athletes in a different way, like they're both generational athletes but just in a different way like i i I don't even know how to explain it but i think i think it's like it's the 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 way he hunts his shots his offensive like the way he creates separation is jordan-esque it's the same thing for Mm -hmm. anthony edwards edwards has taken a really big step as a defender this year year. right but that being said are either one of those guys going to be like perennial defensive first team all guys like like they have the tools to be though that though like but they but Uh, they have the tools I don't think Jalen does, to be honest. His his wingspan and his frame will always limit him as a wing defender. Um, I, I'm really a big proponent for wingspan and hand size. Uh, obviously, I'm a Raptor fan. This is like how the yeah. Raptors grade prospects, and that's a really big part of it. And he has a kind of limited wingspan. I think he's six five, He's six four with a six seven wingspan. Six six. That's not by any means a good profile for a wing defender. You look at any wing defender in NBA history, we're talking Michael Jordan, nearly seven feet, yeah. Kawhi, seven one, seven two, OG Ananobi, seven two, um, Giannis, seven three, seven four, Scotty Barnes, seven three. Those 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 extra inches really do go a long way. And you talk about Marvin Bagley being the worst defender ever. That's what she look said, his, yeah. Look look, look um, at his wingspan. So <laughs> yeah. That's what she but, said, yeah. Um I'm gonna go with a B plus as well. I, I would say second half of the year though, uh, you know, I Ever since they kind of sat down, Christian Wood, and as you said, the last few games just been absolutely killing it. I watched him play twice back to back full games against the Kings, and this kid is just good, right? Like he's just a special scorer. He's going to be a special scorer for a long time. We knew that going into the draft. Like if there's a guy that can get you a bucket. That's him. You know, I'd put James Bucknight right next to him as well once he gets his chance to shine, but. Jalen Green is that dude that's going to get you a bucket in, in a timely manner in crunch time. So I'm going to give him a B-plus for the season. I think his future, his future is bright. Is As you said, is KPJ the best backport mate? Uh, no, he's not. Uh, I think KPJ is really good as well. I just think those two may not mesh, you know, projecting them down the road. But then, mm. selfishly speaking, like, it could work if they put their egos aside, which I don't think will happen um, because KPJ is an exceptional passer. I mean, this dude can pass the rock, but it's just a matter of where is KPJ mentally, right? So regardless, down the road, the Rockets are going to have pieces that they can trade and, you know, and just fit the pieces better. So for this year, I'm going to give him a B plus. I think mental is like 90% of the game, to be honest. That's that's why I have such high hopes in Scotty, and that's why I don't have such high hopes in Jalen Suggs. It's like that was that was my entire. <laughs> this is go. another to drive by <laughs> shooting on De- Jalen Suggs, but but it, it is it is all about mentality, dude. Especially when you're in a perennial loser like the Houston Rockets, like they're not going to be a good team next year either. They're bringing another top five pick, so yeah. 
At number one, we have Cade Cunningham from the Detroit Pistons. What are you grading him, Rob? I want you to go first on this one. Okay, so for me, I had a number one on my draft board. Everybody knows that. I I really wanted to put Scotty at number one, but I'm like, I'm gonna get ridiculed. You know, they they gonna put me on a cross. Um, so I didn't. I, I put Cade there. I, I think in terms of passing, I may get some hate for this. I think they're right there. I think Cade gets to, ex, you know, has more exposure because he has the ball much more in his hands. But Scotty Barnes is like a hell of a basketball passer. Um, and he doesn't get the credit for it nationwide, right? But Kay Cunningham, great passer. I think his defense is overrated in many ways. Kay Cunningham, does he make everybody better? Jury's still out. I know a lot of Pistons fans in our last pod where we just, you know, when uh, Scotty against Cade, they brought up uh, he's averaging Michael Jordan numbers. And I'm looking at his stats, like, okay, well, 17, 5, and 5. I'm like, Tyreek Evans literally, literally had a 25 and 5 season, which was only done, which was only done by four other players. So even though he's had an impressive season, it's still not more impressive than Tyreek Evans' season. So that's not where I'm close. like, right. And that's where I'm like, oh, okay, well, yeah, he's had a good year, but. He's like he he's really good. And don't get me wrong, this may come across as hating, but I think Evan Mobley has been better this year. And I and I'm gonna stick to that. But that's not even, it's not even close. Him. Are you agreeing or disagreeing with me? No, I'm saying it's not even close between those two players. Like they're worlds apart in terms of impact. Like are, are you saying like I'm right or <laughs> you're I'm confused. You're, <laughs> you're not only right. But the oh, idea okay. that you're saying you might get hate for this is crazy to me because they're not even close. Oh, I'm gonna, uh, yeah. oh, I'm gonna get hate for this because there was a bunch of, as you saw, a bunch of Pistons fans trying to bring up a lot of box score numbers um, on a very bad team where he has a high usage rate. So, yeah, I I love Kate. I think Kate's gonna be all star for many years to come, but he needs to be more efficient. And if they want to just throw it out, like, oh, winning doesn't matter. Like, oh, I'm like, yeah, winning does matter. They're like, well, what, what, well, when has winning matter with rookie of the year? I'm like, always. It's just, it's just a matter that most rookies of the years are always on bad teams. It just happens that this year's rookie of the year, and Scotty Barnes, is on a good team, and he made that team better. So overall, I'm gonna give Cade a B plus. Okay, I will give him a C, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> oh. Okay, so oh, I, I also had Cade number one on my board, and I'll tell you why. I had him number one on my board because I didn't watch him play enough in college uh, because I couldn't watch him play. It just It was hard to watch that team play. It just It's a very ugly brand of basketball, and I didn't want to watch them, so I didn't. I ended up watching a lot more FSU and Gonzaga, um, and I thought that it was just a foregone conclusion that he was the number one guy because he said he was the number one guy. Everyone said he was the number one guy and he was just a can't miss prospect. He was number one in high school, number one in college every time. Right. And then I listened to his interview with Dwayne Wade and he was telling about like how the Pistons are going to make the playoffs and he's going to come out and like game busters. Yep. And, and D Wade had the exact same response that you had of like, wait till you see the league. And I think that I underestimated just how big he is okay now um and i underestimated just how little space creation he was going to be able to um generate now he's a very crafty rookie i've heard some people compare him to paul pierce seen some people compare him to jason tatum um one of the arguments in your in your little comments last last video was that he's a much better shooter than scotty barnes um, I'll argue that he is a better shooter than Scotty Barnes, but 1.8% from three is not much better. Okay. <laughs> it's not much better. 28% usage is incredibly high for a player with his current skill set. You can argue that this is throwing him into the wolves and just letting him, you know, lose as much as possible, but he has not made the Pistons better. Okay. Much better. Um, he's miscast in that heliocentric offense role. Uh, I don't necessarily think that Dwayne Casey is a very good coach. Uh, and I think that the players around him, uh, Jeremy Grant and Sadiq Bey, have impacted winning a lot more than he has. And he's had the ball a lot more than they have, which Sadiq I think Bey is, is nice. Sadiq Bey has four, four win shares. So everyone who always says like, hey, Rob, you talk about win shares way too much. Cade plays on a bad team. 
So he won't have as many wind shares. So the fact that he has negative wind shares, just like Joan Suggs has negative wind shares, is not supposed to be counted against him. But it should count. <laughs> but it but it should count against him because his turn his turnovers are high, right? And when you say that he and Scotty Barnes are, you know, on the same level as passers, I would argue they are not. And they never have been. In college, Scotty had a higher assist to turnover ratio. In the NBA, Scotty has a higher assist to turnover ratio. And if you're talking just godly, like advanced reads, I think Scotty makes more of them. So again, I think that Cade's athleticism and lack of size, and again, I'm going to say lack of size because, again, I don't buy that he's 6'8", and he doesn't think that he's 6'8 anymore either because now he's listed as 6'6". If you take out that advantage, that jumbo playmaker, Luca size playmaker advantage, mm -hmm. he no longer has the release point or the size or the strength to do what Luca does. Because if you make Luca 6'6", he's not Luca anymore. And it's very hard to argue that Cade is as talented as Luca ever was. So I think if you do yeah. this draft again, it's very difficult to make the case that he's a number one pick again. I, 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 am, I would be more encouraged by what I've seen from Jalen Green so far, even though the numbers do not back that up. So would you have Jalen number one over Cade? If, if that was the choice that the Pistons were making, which by all, again, according to draft experts at the time, the issue was, Houston couldn't get the other guys to come work out for them. So they ended up going with the guy that worked out for them in Jalen Green. And the Pistons were apparently split between these two. If I'm doing this draft again for the Pistons, it's 100% between Scotty and Evan and probably leaning more towards Evan for them. Okay, just for the fit of their roster. Um, I, but if, they're, if they have to redo it between Jalen and Cade, I would bet on the upside athleticism and alpha scoring of of Jalen Green over this heliocentric, very, 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 very inefficient poor man's James Harden, which I just don't think he has that um, ability. Do you think he'll be I an all-star? I think he'll be an all-star because the numbers will always lend themselves. He does a lot of things that generate like box score numbers. Um, but if you cast him in this heliocentric offense, even though he's much better as a shooter now than he did to start the year he's been better and he's been more efficient as a scorer i just think that as defenses pick up look one thing i'll say he's been doubled more than any rookie for sure he's playing on a team but he's also doubled because he takes so many shots and so many stupid shots he takes a lot of really dumb shots and i've watched his shot selection and there are games where i'm like he took seven shots that he, that absolutely were forced and I think teams know that about him. He forces the ball too much. He holds it way too long. His reads are always a little bit slow. I don't see the hyper-processing speed that I saw in Luka Doncic as a, as a rookie. Look, honestly, Luka is a super rookie. Hell no. Right? And, and honestly, pe people don't people sleep on Michael Jordan's passing ability as a rookie. He was also a better passer than Kate as a rookie. Tyreek Evans um, had 5.6 win shares as a rookie. Okay, now he was I, a I, monster. I, I, People forget that, but he was hurt Ty, year two and year three. Tyreek's rookie season was actually people. People won't admit this because of what Tyreek became. But if right. you had to compare rookie Tyreek to rookie LeBron, rookie Tyreek was better than rookie LeBron. That's the crazy part. So what I'm from a to stats say is perspective, that, I would say from from like a numbers perspective. Um. From from an advanced metrics perspective, rookie Tyreek had 5.6 win shares. Rookie LeBron had 5.1. So granted, rookie LeBron was a high schooler. So you give the advantage to Tyreek. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it definitely matters because the next year, LeBron literally was like 10 times the player. But that being said, um, rookie Cade is, should not be mentioned in the same breath as those two guys. It's not even close. And he might get a lot better. And, yeah. you know, um, he might because he because I, unlike you, I don't think his defense is necessarily something to sleep on. I've been impressed with him defensively. I think he has a lot of tools. I think his wingspan is really good. I think he moves his feet laterally. I think he's a really good leader. But his offensive decision making, passing, vision, space creation, all of these are just so below where I thought they would be. So that's where I, I get this. Yeah, like I, I'm not thrilled. Well, there it is, guys. Let us know how you guys feel in the comments below. A few micro segments of, of, of this full show. This is a full show in its entirety. 
You guys can also catch it on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you, wherever you get your podcast. Again, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And on behalf of Rob and the entire Basketball Zone community, we thank you guys, and we'll see you very, very soon. Peace. Thank you.